the fastest van around Nürburgring. What was the story with this? Because you was going for it. I was going for it, and then it crashed. And right. It me. What? So welcome back to another video. We have come over to see what possibly could have been Boxall's answer to the super van. Let's introduce it. This is a 540 horsepower Boxall Bavaro. Let's dive in and let's see how this van has made that power. It was, then we went to 539.4. Point four as well. Yeah, <laughs> don't the forget point, the point four. Gotta get the point four. Gotta get the point four. So, and everyone goes, you can see when I say it, everyone's like, 540 yards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was on the last official dyno. Right, okay. That's what, I, that's what it was. Now. <laughs> 30. Turbo? Yes. 30. 30. Genuine. Yeah. Oh, that's a genuine Garrett, yeah. Oh, genuine Garrett, yeah. right. Gen 2. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, water meth, anything like that yes, on the fence? Yes, water meth. So obviously this has started life as a very, very basic Vauxhall Vivaro. It's a little bit fast, this thing, for a van. The story goes this van. His mates had said, it can't be done. You can't do it. It can't be fitted. You can't really make, you know, a 500 horsepower work van. And lo and behold, probably 12 months later, this is what ended up being the creation. But what makes this special is it is a two litre 16 valve turbo Z20 LET engine, which is basically out of like the Astra VXR, the Astra GSI, the two litre turbo. Obviously full custom arches, the front splitter, the front bumpers looks like it's got an extension lip on, a giant front mount intercooler. It really, really stands out. And with the color, it's really in your face. The wheels and with the little accent piece in the middle, it really sets itself off to stand out as a full custom van. So what is interesting again for me is when we dive inside, you can see there's just as much work on the inside as there is the out. The, the big question I wanted to speak to you about, yeah. the fastest van around Nürburgring. This guy, Martin. What was the story with this? Because you was going for it. I was going for it and then it crashed. And right. it cost me 13 and a half grand. What? It's the insurance. Oh, yeah, it's oil. And I couldn't stop. Oh, did you? Oh, hey, it's oil. I Slowest corner on the track. Slowest bloody corn on the track. I ate oil and I physically couldn't stop. Right. And uh, it was either plough into well and all them or go round the outside and plough into one it was a golf. Oh, so you hit a card on oh, there? Yeah, car, yeah. Right, okay. Proper T-boned it. So you go to the ring. I'm going to try for the lap record. I'm going to push well, you off. I was just practising that was, wasn't it? It was just yeah, practising was... it, it was an open track. Um... So you went out, you've hit some oil, you bumped into a car, yep. everyone's at a stop. Yep. What happens then? Please come. To actually on the circuit? To actually on the circuit, because then um, these Spanish people wanted the police. I couldn't speak Spanish, they couldn't speak English. Wanted the police, they come, took um, statements, yeah. took the vehicles, took the passports, everything like that. And then uh, that was it next day, when I got the vehicles, when I got the passports, all sound. So well, this is the day after the crash. This is the day after. Right. But it was the insurance company afterwards. The insurance got on onto the phone. Who's the insurance company? My insurance. Told them. Right. And they said, yep, no problem. And I sent them the video footage. Yep, no problem. The insurance companies did whatever they did. And because the insurance, Spain insurance? Yes. Your insurance. My insurance, right. blah, blah, blah. So long story short, it looks like it's going to go knock for knock because it was on. The Nuremberg ring. Correct, you've got to take the risk. You, yeah. you, you, that, that's unfortunate, these things are. Yeah. Your car might be under grand, their car might be for a thousand quid. Yeah, simple as that. It's the if way you're it is. you're on the ring, you take the risk. Yeah. And then my insurance company decided, hang on a minute, we've got to pay out 13 and a half grand here. We ain't doing that. You're paying it, Chris. I said, no, 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 I'm insured. And they went, no, you're not. This was about six months after the fact. Right. This was, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. Said, yeah, leave it with us and sort it. About six months later, they went, uh, no, we're not paying it, you're paying it. They went to court. My insurance company took me to court to get the money back off me. 
So they paid out, they tried, they wanted the money off me, so they went to court. Their argument was it was a racetrack. I agree. Full on racetrack. Not a toll road. T yeah. It was a racetrack. Yeah, it's debatable, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, I understand that. And I said, well, hang on a minute, there's a piece of paper. Where in there does it say excluding Nürburgring? So I stood in court and I said, I haven't got the documents to state that that is not insured at that point. Yep. It turns out, if you go over, if you go down the M6 toll, or over the Umber Bridge or anything like that, you are not insured. On a, t on a toll not, road? You're not insured because it's a toll road. It's a private toll road, you're not insured. Wow. So if you have an accident, because the M6 toll road is private. Yes, it is, yeah. If you have an accident on the M6 toll road, you're not insured. Went through the courts, everything. Yeah. But anyway, they did me. They did me, so with the court fees and everything. So this is the magic area and this is what makes this van so special we've got the, the zedler engine two litre 16 valve turbo which it has forged rods forged pistons cryoly frozen crank to for strengthening port and polish cylinder head garrett gt30 turbo i would have thought something like a thousand cc injectors the water meth injection nicely nicely fitted in there looking at the conversion itself and obviously be, done one myself for my recovery truck this is custom mounts so no matter what you have to do with these things you have to make the three possibly four yeah he's put a front stabilizer on i don't think you can see just there so you make the four mounts to mount the engine into place you then obviously have to make four custom shafts which chris that is the only thing on this van he has not done himself the four mounts custom shafts and then the wiring now wiring nowadays with zedlets kind of gets a little bit easier because there is conversion looms and they have been fitted in quite a lot of vehicles so again to get it to fit and to run not overly too bad of a job full tig works boost pipes dump valve or well, unit 10 looks like a unit 10 i think manifold and again as i said a gt30 genuine garrett turbo this summertime it will be back to full full power and will be out and running at a fair few events fingers crossed and also be up at the quarter mile at Santa Pod. Kind of gone quiet, aren't you? Used to be at all these events. That why soon, soon life and panelists take we, over. We got pregnant. Well, unfortunately, we lost the first one, and that was it. Then I lost interest in everything. Yeah. That was when I yeah. completely shut off, and that was when the problem started with this. Then she come along, and that is it. You know what I mean? Changes your world. Changes so, your world, man. This literally has been sat in the back. I mean, so still now, looks good though. I'm, I'm starting to. Get your passion back. I'm going to get back into it now, yeah, because she loves going, innit? So I'll tell you what, then, Vo Vauxhall show, you come in. If, if I can, I would. Let me know and I'll put you on stand with me. With that? Yeah. Come on, man. Take a bit of cleaning, like. Oh, uh, it gives you, gives you a bit of motivation to clean it, doesn't it? Does, it? it does, to be fair, it does. It does. Because I want to put a lineup of cool stuff. I had, some, I, had some really, I had some really good stuff last year, and again, this year, again, I want to do the same again, just bring some, yeah. some different things, hence... I think it'd be cool on, on show there with us. Yeah. And it'd give you the passion to come back, mate. It would. For me, is I want to ignite people's passion back into it. Yeah, it seems to have gone quiet, yeah, doesn't it? Everyone has. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's lost a bit of the way with it all. Yeah. And like I say, it'd be cool to... I think see since everyone COVID just kicked everything in the teeth, didn't oh, it? Oh, everyone, everyone just lost that, didn't it? Yeah, and then people have not been flooding back to it. They've just been just trickling. Just trickling along. Because they've either got another project they're already on with at home or exactly. family or anything like that exactly, yeah. and they've just died away with it all That's it. but it's a shame like i say it's getting everyone well, back so diving onto the inside what you need to realize is this is a work van it is not a show van so all the inside has been fully hydro dipped everything the dash all the door cards everything has been hydro dipped full one-off how amazing does it look in here but as you move into the driver's seat so you've got this OMP steering wheel, giant rev counter, but look at all the gauges you've got. AFR, I would have thought, boost, oil, water, all the usual, because as much as this is a Vauxhall Vivaro, the Vauxhall Vivaro is based on the Renault platform. So a lot of the electrics on this thing will be Renault. So that would mean a lot of the ECU feeds out of the engine ECU will not read properly on these clocks. You have to just adapt. And this is how he's done it with the additional gauges. And if you look, everyone is in a monster energy can and then really nicely wired in. I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you from the outside. All nicely sat on the dash in this custom like pod to show off all the gauges. It is such a cool place to be in here. It is absolutely fantastic. And again, going back to, this is 
a work van. So let's dive in the back. So what is interesting is the fuel system is around this area, all on the side, because the van runs methanol injection, which is obviously the AEM kit, which is back here. So obviously he can monitor his water meth. He has the additional sensor, which is on the side to show when it's running low. Because obviously what he's trying to do is, water meth is, is kind of debatable for everyone. It does drop intake temperatures quite significantly and it does work very, very well. So then you go down to the fuel pump system. I would have guessed 2044 pumps, swirl pot, which is, comes off the actual tank. That gives enough fuel to give the, again, the 540 horsepower it's needed. And to be fair, I don't think these are Teflon lined hoses the smell in here isn't very bad because if you don't run Teflon lines, it can get quite overpowering having the fuel uh, pumps and filters and stuff inside the vehicle. But to say that, you know, I've been in many cars and it does kind of give us a, 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 a fuel aroma. It's very good in here. And to say he takes his little girl here and everywhere, it must be fine. So that's very, very impressive for me. Another nice feature is the external um, side exit exhaust. As you can see, it's got a little bit hot, but full side exit exhaust. And can you imagine that just bouncing off the limits of throwing flames out and people just thinking, what the hell is going on with that van? There's the water meth controller. I say this thing has been very, very well thought out and put together in a really nice fashion to be a usable work van, as well as a bit of performance toy with the 540 horsepower. This is the rear brake setup, which I'm being told is a set of what look like four pots off a of Mercedes. And this is just the rears. The additional caliper I would suspect is for the handbrake, but a massive rear brake setup. So on the front is even bigger brake setup, which look like giant six pots Brembo's. So not only has this got a lot of power, it's got the stopping force to match. So we'll sign this one off. There's gonna be a lot more coming from the channel with the van, cause we're gonna take it out over the summertime and do some drag racing with us, go to some events and see it on the road again, because Chris has had a little bit of time off from being out with the boys. So fingers crossed there'll be some more. What an interesting van. I think we all know there's another van on the YouTube scene, but let's just say this one actually has the grass to prove it. And if anyone who's got a full size van who wants to race this, we're more than happy to come along and put it against. So I'll sign this one off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next video.